let's let's talk a little bit about um, water supplies too, because I mean, rain does create a lot of mud, um, creates river flooding, and one of the parts that you have in the book on a number of occasions is that the troops are being marched for 10, 12, 20 miles a day. And it's, it's a summer heat in the South. And one of the things that immediately was what happens with regard to hydration? Do these men stay hydrated? Um, I mean, when you look at the gift shop, it's like this little canteen that they get that you can buy, right? Um, and that does not seem like, if, especially if you're thinking like summer heat, you should probably drink a gallon of water, especially in the operations they are doing. Is it maybe surprising that we don't have more soldiers collapse and suffer from dehydration? Well, I think the truth is that we do have a lot of soldiers who collapse and get sick and sometimes die of dehydration. And I ran across a lot more of that in my solicitors than I expected to find. I mean, we grow up with a certain mythology, that may be too strong a word, but we grow up with a certain notion. Mm -hmm. Now, for example, 19th century people were used to wearing all that wool outside, so it didn't bother them that much. And, you know, surely these were tough guys who could, you know, could march 20 miles, and, you know, that's, there's no problem there. Uh, and it's simply not true. I mean, it's surprising how often they got out of those uniforms when they could. But in terms of water, they have canteens, or sometimes they just have a cup, because if, mm -hmm. if you're on a march, a cup's easier to carry than a canteen. If you've ever yeah. done much hiking, even today, a canteen can be kind of a bother mm -hmm. you know, very far and it's flapping around on you. Uh, so they drink when they can. When they when they cross a body of water, if they cross a creek, if they run across a spring, they drink when they can. Hopefully their officers will let them stop. Hopefully, uh, unlike in the Perryville campaign, the officers won't claim those springs for themselves and not let the enlisted men near them. So they drink when they can. Uh, when they can't find decent water, they drink bad water. Uh, there's so many accounts of men trying to squeeze water out of mud. Um, that sort of thing. Um, hoof prints, yeah. holes in the ground, that holds water. They drink when they can. Uh, on long, hard, lunch, hard lunches, especially summer lunches, they don't seem to drink enough, which is why on every long summer march I can think of, you've got heat exhaustion, heat prostration, heat stroke happening, um, men falling out along the road all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you know, we always hear about Lee leaving a third of his army in Virginia when he goes to Antietam. That's not uncommon. Mm -hmm. So they really were often dehydrated and sick and collapsing. And I suspect that the numbers of men who were there for muster roll in the morning uh, were larger than the ones you're going to find at the end of the day's march because they're, they're spread out for miles. Um, you know, you, you would think that, that everything's been written about Gettysburg, and I, I found that it actually isn't true. One of the things I discovered about Gettysburg was how hot it was as those two armies approached Adams County and how many men fell out and got sick and even died in some cases along the side of the road just getting to Gettysburg in the first place. Well, the movie definitely does not include that part. That's not in the movie. No, that's, that's not in the movie. And I have yet to go to a reenactment where I've seen them walking around in nothing but their hats, their shirts, and their long johns. Right, yeah. yeah. Seems think, to have been fairly common in hot weather as long as there weren't women and kids around. 